This is an upper body strength session for your follicular phase. So what's signature to this phase in the cycle is kind of a baseline state in hormones, low hormones to kind of elevated estrogen. So we're trending towards that rise in estrogen by the end of this phase. What that means is we want to be working on muscle development in our strength work. That means we are using higher volume workouts with heavier loads. So you want to be feeling the challenge in the last few reps of every interval. You'll see me kind of hitting that point a little earlier than anticipated in some of these exercises. We're also using the, the isolation work with open chain movement patterns where we're moving the hands away and toward the body to really isolate different muscle groups in the upper body. With that said, it won't be this really um, high energy draw. You won't see the heart rate spikes into your peak working zone, and that's okay. This is still a follicular phase practice. I think sometimes maybe you're like me and you experience a little bit of follicular FOMO where you feel like this is my time to shine. This is my time to work hard. I need to be drenched in sweat and breathless the entire time. That's the old paradigm. The new paradigm recognizes the value add of this this focused strength work even in the follicular phase this is the time when we can leverage our inner chemistry to help with muscle development to help kind of shift the ratio of muscle to fat in our body composition for better health for better energy and just to feel at home in our bodies so with that, today I want you to go a little bit on the heavier side for your upper body. I want you, if you can, to have a set of medium light dumbbells and a set of medium heavy. I'm using a set of 15 pound dumbbells and then a set of 20 pound dumbbells as the heavy set. You'll also want a chair or an elevated surface. We are performing many of these exercises in a seated position, so it needs to be comfortable for kind of um, a, a comfortable seat. So you don't want it to be too low. We're also using it for elevated planks where we're putting our feet up on the chair to get a little bit more load in the upper body in our planks and we're using it for tricep dips so you can kind of keep that in mind as you're selecting your elevated surface we're moving through three uh, different sets of exercises each set has three exercises and we're performing it for three rounds so it's kind of this this sacred cycle of three in today's workout each set will have two strength focused exercises that are working opposite muscle groups and then we will add in a core focused exercise at the end so this one the working portion of the session is about 30 minutes long but we'll have a little bit more time in between for kind of breaking down the movements for offering those ways to scale or progress this one is designed to bring us back to beginners mind so we're coming into kind of fundamental movement patterns so that it's a great one to come back to if you've been in in the practice of strength training for a while. It's also a great entry point if this is kind of your first time dipping your toes into strength work, particularly in the upper body. I find for women, a lot of times we've, <laughs> I know myself, I neglected my upper body strength work for a long time. I would do, you know, in HIIT workouts, maybe some push ups or things where I was weight bearing on the hands, but it wasn't very often that I engaged in this type of isolation work for the upper body. So I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I have come to to really love this part of the practice, the kind of lower intensity, but really hyper-focused intention on, on the upper body muscle groups. We will have that five-minute warm-up in the beginning, the five-minute cool down at the end. Those are always optional if you're coming in warm from something else, maybe a walk, or maybe you've been moving around already, or maybe you have a way that you like to cool down on your own. You can always skip those elements and use this practice in the way it works for you. This workout, this, <laughs> this time is for you, so let it serve you in the best way possible. And let's begin. Let's get right into this upper body warm up for today. Find a comfortable stance. You can let your feet be about shoulder width apart. We're simply going to begin with an arm circle. So we inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, bend the elbows, hug your elbows behind you. Feel the lats engage. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, hug those elbows in. Start right away to draw the front ribs in. 
and exhale. Lift up through the heart, inhale, big breath, and exhale. So start to feel some heat in the upper back. Inhale, reach, and exhale. We're connecting breath to movement here to maintain throughout the practice. Last one. This time, take your arms to a cactus shape. We're going to rotate the arms down, palms down, reach out. Then hug the elbows onto behind you onto the back, reach up and back down. So it's a rotate and pull. Reach up, down, and forward. Hug the shoulder blades onto the back as you bring those elbows behind you. So you feel the shoulders working here. The more tone you can add to the arms, the more you'll get from this warm up. Last one like that. Let's take the arms out to T. Keep the feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to twist to the right. Imagine just pressing that back palm behind you. Keep the hips nice and square. So we're firing up the obliques and we're activating the core here. Draw the belly in. And notice if you can breathe against that constraint of the twist. Last one, come through center, inhale, and then to the other side. So we're building some heat just by holding the arms out in this T-shape as we twist the spine. Breathe in. Make sure the shoulders are soft away from the ears as you exhale. The hips are facing forward. Last big breath here. And we'll slowly come out. We'll find hands and knees next, nice and slow. Simple cat and cow, shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Inhale, soften the belly, gaze up. As you exhale from the tail, curl under, round, press through the hands, draw your chin to your chest. From the tailbone, shine the sitting bones back. Feel that ripple up the spine, lift the gaze. Exhale, reverse it, draw the belly in. Let the head hang heavy. Inhale, open it up. And exhale, round. Excellent job. This time we'll take the left hand behind the head, open that elbow nice and high, keep the hip square. Exhale, wrap it under. So notice how the rib cage and the hips can move independently. So we want to create those unique and separate forms of movement. Often the rib cage and the hips get sort of frozen together. We move them together, but we have so much more mobility that we can explore in the spine here. Last one and switch. So right hand comes behind the head, open that right elbow high and wrap it under. So this movement is quickly becoming one of my favorites. If I'm ever feeling tight in the upper back or feeling like a little slouchy in the posture, this movement pattern is so beneficial for just bringing more awareness and more ability to articulate the two independently. Last one like this. And then we'll walk the hands out now, tuck the toes under, come into a downward dog. So press all 10 finger pads forward, soften heart, belly, chest toward the thighs. And then we'll move between here and bare planks. As you inhale, come forward, let the knees hover, stretch the crown of the head. Exhale, downward facing dog, soften heart, belly, chest toward the thighs. Inhale, come forward, feel that engagement in the belly. And exhale, downward dog. Come forward, bare plank. This time we're going to stay in bare plank. And we're simply going to step one foot, then the other, come back to bare plank. So we want to keep the shoulders and the hips still and steady the whole way. Notice if the low ribs or the belly is starting to puff out or drop a little bit, can you hug it back in? So we moved through some dynamic stretching. Now we're activating core and arms and shoulders. Last one. Let's bring the knees down. Walk the hands even further forward. Take them wider than shoulder width apart. We're coming into a half push-up. So now shoulders are over the wrists. Hips are forward of the knees. Let's begin. Take the chest all the way down. Squeeze those thumbs together at the top. Inhale and exhale. Feel that push key action here. <sighs> Inhale, chest to the floor. Exhale, press it up. Last one like this. <sighs> and then we'll slowly lower all the way to the belly. Reach your arms behind you. Let the neck be nice and long. 
And then as you inhale, keep your legs grounded. Just lift the torso. Turn your thumbs up toward the sky. So externally rotating the shoulders, hem back down. Inhale, come up, rotate. This is sort of a variation of cobra. Turn the thumbs up. So you're turning toward the thumb side of the hand to externally rotate those shoulders. Lift it up and back down. We're here for one more big breath. Lift it up and release. Take your hands beside you. Press up onto hands and knees. We'll slowly transition to standing. So step one foot and then the other. And then we'll slowly roll up to standing nice and easy. Let's enjoy a big breath in together. Inhale and exhale. That is your very quick upper body warm up. You should be feeling a little bit warm and the shoulders are nice and loose. So you are ready to get into your workout next. Let's get right into our upper body work for today. Just make sure you have two sets of dumbbells. One is medium light, one is medium heavy, and that you have a chair to use for some of these movement patterns. Our first set of work, we're completing three exercises in three rounds. Two are going to be weighted, and then one is a core focused exercise. I'll demonstrate quickly with a few form cues before we get into the first round. This is a timed workout. So we'll take the kind of the guidance and the form cues before we start the timer. So you want your back to be in that neutral curvature. So you'll have a slight curve in the lower back. It may not be flat against the floor. Even so, I want you to tone the low belly. So that means hugging the, the low ribs and the hip points together so that you feel that deep connection to your transverse abdominis. We're going to take the arms straight overhead. Palms are facing away from you. Make sure that your wrists are nice and neutral, that you're not tilting the weights out or in for the chest press. As you come down, I want you to inflate the lungs and lift the upper back off the floor. That'll give you more range of motion. Elbows come down as far as they can, and then press the upper back into the mat as you squeeze the thumbs toward each other energetically. So we inhale, inflate, lift the upper back, and then exhale. <sighs> squeeze just like that. So you want to get that little bit of mobility. It's like you're arching the upper back only and then pressing it into the mat. I want you to avoid overarching in the lower back. If that starts to happen, you know you need to go down and wait. We're pairing this with a bent row so we get the chest and then the back. This one is for the back. Let's bring the feet as close together as is comfortable. You're gonna come into a slight hinge position. So we're going to fold the body at the hip creases and keep the belly hugging in. So spine is in this nice straight line from crown to tail. The palms are going to be facing in. This is a narrow grip row. And then we're simply going to pull the elbows straight back toward the hips. At the top of the movement, make sure you're hugging the elbows into your sides. Shoulders are broadening open that you're not winging out. That's an indication that your chest is tight and that there's strength gaps in the back. So I want you to really focus on hugging the elbows in. Avoid tipping the shoulders down and trying to take the elbows to the sky. Instead, you want the elbows to come straight back toward the hips. So you have that more or less 90 degree bend in the elbow. The chest is nice and expanded. You get that, that stretch across the chest. Then our core focused exercise, we're using the chair for all of our plank work today as an option. You can always have the feet on the ground if that feels more stable for you. So you're going to come into your strong plank position. Heels are directly over the toes and then shoulders are directly over the wrists. I want you to avoid dropping the hips or hiking them up. They stay in alignment with the spine. So we squeeze the thumbs together. We lift low ribs and hip points together. This might be enough. You might be in your plank and just hold there. You might be on the chair. You might have feet on the ground. We're going to add a mountain climber if you want a little bit more core challenge. We hug it in. It's nice and slow. That is our core focused exercise. So we're moving 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest, three rounds of those three exercises. So I will get our timer started here for us and we will come down for your chest press first. So move into position, 
this one we're going to be transitioning from supine to standing. So just take it nice and easy during that rest period and transition slowly. Let's begin in three, two, one. We take it down slow and squeeze it to the top. Down nice and slow, time under tension, and squeeze. Now add the movement of the rib cage. Inflate the lungs, press the upper back into the floor. Lift it up and squeeze. You can pick up the pace if that feels appropriate, depending on your weight selection. So if you're in the beginning phases of your practice, maybe you're still going lighter weight, you can add some pace to increase the intensity. If the load is pretty heavy, you might be slowing things down. Even when you go slow, you're adding time under tension, so the challenge is there. And rest. So here's where we want to transition nice and easy. Give yourself those few moments of pause in each new body position before coming all the way to stand. Bent row is next, so the feet come together, come into that slight hinge, palms are facing each other, and begin. Take the elbows straight back and extend all the way. Make sure your arm comes all the way straight at the bottom of this movement. Hug the elbows into your sides, exhale as you lift. Inhale to reset, exhale to pull. So really feel the power of the pull action where you're taking that load from further to closer to the body. Keep the chest expansive. Back of the neck is long, so you're not lifting the head to look forward, and you're not tucking the chin to gaze down. We're going to switch to that plank next. Three, two, and one. Set your weights off to the side and come into your plank or prepare to come into your plank. So you're either feet on the ground or getting a little bit more of that load by taking the feet up. Then you add the optional mountain climber. It's there if you want it. Get your plank, refine the position, and then begin. Hug a knee in and step it back. This can be super slow so that you really feel that change in tension on the belly. Keep hugging hip points and low ribs toward each other. Even as you come into that hips extended position, you still have that magnetizing of hip points and low ribs. Don't let it round your upper back. You want to keep the heart stretching forward. And breathe. Last one. Slowly, mindfully step down. We'll transition now onto the back once again for our chest press. This is round two. Coming into it, we only have three rounds of these. So get into position. Weight comes overhead or over the center of the chest. And let's begin. Inflate the lungs. Take it down. Exhale. Press it together. Inhale. Open. Stretch. And exhale. You got this. Inhale. And exhale. Pick up the pace if that is appropriate for you. If you can maintain your mechanics, your technique the whole way through. So again, we aren't <laughs> mashing the lower back into the floor here. You do feel that kind of grounded sensation in the low back because you are engaging the belly, but I don't want you to take out the curvature completely. Let it be the natural curvature of your spine and rest. This is the transition I want you to be very careful with as you transition from that supine all the way up to standing. You're going to grab your weights. We're coming into our bent row next. So feet come close together, hinge at the hips, and let's begin. Elbows come straight back, stretch across the chest, and extend. Make sure you're hugging your elbows into your sides the whole way up and the whole way down. As you start to get tired, you might feel the elbows try to wing out, but instead really activate the lats by hugging them into your sides. Feel that full extension and then draw it back. You got this. We're here for just over 10 more seconds. Shoulders stay away from the ears, so notice if they start to shrug. Can you keep them nice and relaxed? And rest. Set those weights to the side. Coming back to your plank. 
So your plank might feel like it's all in the belly, but this is strong work for the upper body as well. Start to slowly make your way into that plank position. You can have your feet up if you wish. And let's begin. Optional mountain climber. It's there for you if you want it. Otherwise, you're holding and refining your plank pose. <sighs> really hug the knee in if you're finding that mountain climber. <sighs> Try to bring the knee all the way to the back of the arms. <sighs> nice and easy. <sighs> Keep your breath fluid, so especially as the work gets challenging, try not to hold your breath. Keep hugging the hands energetically to the midline. Last three, two, and one. Slowly come down, transition onto your back for your chest press. This is our final round of these three exercises, and then we'll move to our next set of work. Come down onto your back. Take the weight into position over the center of the chest, and let's begin. Take it down, inflate the lungs, and exhale, empty them out. So upper back lifts off the mat, and then we press it down into the earth. So you're finding the stretch across the chest, and then contract. Use the breath here during the exertion, so you have that exhale through pursed lips to help tone the belly, to help support the movement pattern. And we start with the floor press. It's a slightly less range of motion, but you can still connect to that strength in the chest and rest. Slowly come up. Over time, we'll build to adding a bench or a surface a towel blanket under the chest for more elevation but for now we're in that floor press lots of work to be done there let's come into our hinge position for bent rows next and begin pull it back notice the belly the more that you can tone that space between pubic bone and navel the less pull the less strain you'll feel on your lower back the muscles in your back are going to fire. So low back, upper back, middle back, they're going to fire because you are in this hinge position. That is a natural recruitment of the musculature, but we are focusing on the lats here. We don't want to feel any pull or strain in the lower back. So we draw the belly in, we hug the elbows and pull it back. Last one, rest. Let's take those weights to the side. We have one more round of our plank, and then I'll go over the exercises as you recover for about a minute between sets of work. Let's come into our plank prep here. Both feet up, and let's begin. If you want it, the mountain climbers are there. Nice and slow. Keep that time under tension. That asymmetrical load as you lift one leg at a time. Otherwise, you've got both feet on the ground and you're just refining this position. Wherever you are, energetically hug heels of the hands and ball mound of the foot or feet together. That will help fire up the belly. You'll start to feel maybe even a little bit of a shake. I want you to keep your hips. If you're working through that mountain climber, keep the hips at the same elevation the whole time. And slowly come out, shake it out, rest. That is our first set of work. We'll recover for about a minute and I'll walk you through the next set of exercises. So our first set of exercises, I'm gonna be dropping down to my medium light weights. And here, I want you to be on the very edge of your seat and we'll turn the palms out, simple bicep curl, but we're in that seated position, so we're taking out any help from the legs. Here, I want you to fix, glue, hug your elbows into your sides so that it's only the lower arm moving. This is an open chain exercise where the hands are free to move. That means we're isolating the biceps. So the more that you can sort of fix or immobilize the upper arm, the more that you will isolate that bicep. I want you to squeeze it at the top as hard as you can and then release. We're pairing that with tricep dips. You have the option 
to take the weight onto your lap if you wish. This is plenty of work, body weight only. So I'll let you make that choice when the time comes. I want you to keep your hands just about shoulder width apart, maybe even slightly closer together behind you. Fingers are facing forward. The heels of your hands are on the edge of that chair. We broaden the, the shoulder blades, excuse me, collarbones apart, lift the hip bones toward the low ribs. And I want you to keep your hips really close to that chair. You're just going to slide down as far as feels good for you and then press it back up. So I want you to come down until you feel a little bit of a stretch in the chest and then press it back up. If you're a beginner, this might be your range of motion. You might just have tiny dips, just kind of exploring that strength in the backs of the arms. Again, you have the option to load it by putting a weight onto your lap. If you want to make it slightly harder, you can extend the legs long. I find that it creates a little bit of strain in my knees, so I always like to keep a generous bend, but you find what is appropriate for you. And then we're pairing this one with a bear plank pull. So we'll come down into our bear plank position. You'll have a weight on one side. Come into your bear plank, so shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. We're going to lift the knees to hover. Make sure you're not too close. That takes this, the work out of the abs, out of the core. So here we're simply going to come under, pull that weight across, and switch. What I want you to do is slow it down so that you're not turning the hips and the shoulders as you pull it through. If you start to feel any strain in your lower back whatsoever, I want you to bring this to tabletop and simply work on the pull and the core stabilization here. You'll still be working the core like crazy, but it, you'll have less potential for that strain in the lower back. Those are your options for this next set of work. Again, we have three sets. Each one is 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. I'll get us started now and we'll set up for our seated bicep curl. So we'll move in about 10 seconds here. Grab your weight, come onto the very edge of your seat. Take a big breath and we'll move in three, two, one. Hug the elbows in, squeeze the biceps at the top. So we are in a seated position, which means we're not getting any help from the legs. We're not able to throw the back into this movement. It's isolation work for the biceps. I still want you to tone the low belly, keep the shoulders relaxed away from the ears so that all of the work, all of the effort is in that bicep. Breathe in as you extend fully. Make sure you're straightening the arm all the way at the bottom and then squeezing that bicep all the way at the top. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Option now to keep one weight on your lap or go body weight only for these tricep dips. I think I'm going to go body weight only, see how it is for the first round. Usually body weight is plenty for me. Let's come into position. Hips are close to that chair. Fingers are facing forward. Elbows are hugging behind you. Let's begin. Take it down and up. So again, you can pick up the pace if you need to for more intensity, for more challenge, or keep it nice and slow on the way down. Keep that time under tension. Make sure you're straightening the arms all the way at the top so you get the full range of motion here. Try not to let the, let the shoulders dip forward at the bottom, even as you're stretching. They'll come slightly forward just because we're lowering the hips below that point of contact with the chair. Three, two, and one. Slowly come down onto hands and knees for your bear plank pull. So again, you can take this to tabletop if you wish, or you're in bear plank where we have shoulders directly over the wrists. Make sure your knees are underneath the hips. They're not too far forward. Let's let the knees hover come up and pull it under. So shoulders and hips stay in that square level position the entire time. This is activating through anti-rotation. So we can activate the obliques either by facilitating rotation of the spine or by stabilizing and resisting rotation in the spine. So here, your spine wants to twist to take out some of the 
<laughs> the load on the core musculature wants to take the path of lesser resistance. But here we're staying in that level plane and rest. Slowly come down. We'll transition back up to our seat for bicep curls coming up in just 10 seconds. So catch your breath. This one, it's upper body, it's isolation work. Let's begin now. So you won't be feeling that huge draw on your heart rate. It's not going to spike really into your peak zone, but you're still in that, that cardio zone or that place where you're burning both carbohydrates and fat. So it is moderate to vigorous intensity, still challenging but not one that's going to completely ring you out. So it's good to alternate with, say, your total body or your lower body days that have more of that high energy demand, that spike in the heart rate. Three, two, and one. Set it down. Coming into tricep dips next. I'm going to try it with the weight this time. See how it goes. We're moving in about 10 seconds. So if you have the weight, you want it kind of close to your hip creases for comfort. It's not going to roll off. Let's get into position. Three, two, and one. Take it down and press up all the way straight. So we have the, the load very close to where the range of motion is happening. So the lever arm not too long here. If you're not using weights, you can increase that lever arm by straightening the legs. Take it back. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears. Nice long neck. <sighs> Breathe in as you come down. Keep that those hips sliding close to the edge of your chair, almost as if it would touch. Last three, two, and one. Slowly transition out. We're getting ready for our bear plank pull. So you can have one weight far off to the side. Shake out your wrists if you need. I know that tricep work is a lot of weight bearing on the hands. Let's come into position over the knees and let's begin. Pull it through to the side and switch. Make sure you're not fully locking out the elbows here. I have a tendency to be a little hypermobile in that joint, so it really takes some focus to micro bend the elbow to keep the arms active. So we're not dumping all the load into the joint, but using the muscles to support and stabilize. Keep the spine nice and long. Back of the head, excuse me, back of the neck is neutral. You'll even feel this in your legs a little bit and rest. Coming up, up on our third round here, final round of this set of exercises. We'll move to our bicep curl in under 10 seconds. Let's go in five, four, three, two, and one. Lift it up. Hug the elbows into your sides to really isolate the biceps. So we're working the front of the arm here, and then we pair it with the back of the arm. Squeeze it up all the way to the top, and then all the way down. So I am going a little bit heavier for biceps than I might normally. So you'll see me slowing down. You'll see that little bit of struggle. If you need to, you can pick up the pace. This is where... The growth happens when you feel that struggle, last one, and rest. Coming to tricep dips next, you have the option for the weight if you want it. Shake out the shoulders, stretch out the chest a little bit, turn the thumbs behind you to get that nice pull across the bicep. We'll move in three, two, one. Slide the hips right up along that chair and all the way straight. We take it down and up. You have light weight in your feet. You're not really pressing the feet super strong into the floor. They're just light. They're supporting the other half of this movement. We're here for 20 more seconds. Stay with me. Down, 
and up. You might be moving much quicker, and that's okay. If you've got the load, maybe you're slowing it down with me. Keep that spine straight and strong. Straight down, straight up. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come out and get ready for your bear plank pull next. We'll have a full minute of recovery after this while I walk you through our next three exercises, our last set of work. We're moving in five seconds here over the knees. Let's begin now. Take it under and back. So I feel <laughs> in my own body as I start to get tired, my hips want to rotate. My shoulders want to rotate to find a path of less resistance. But instead, can you stay level, stay grounded, stay focused? <sighs> breathe out as you pull. <sighs> so we breathe in to reset exhale to pull so it's that nice strong reach and back last two and one slowly come out we're going to be using our chair once again for the next set of work you can recover for the next minute or so and I'll walk you through our three exercises. We have a shoulder press, an upright row, and then we're coming back to our elevated plank. So for this one, your shoulder press, you're in a seated position. The thing I want you to watch out for is the position and the curvature in your lower back. So as you take the weight overhead, I don't want you to arch in the lower back to make up for any gaps in mobility. Instead, I want you to lift the pubic bone toward the navel. It might feel like a slight posterior tilt, but really we're bringing the pelvis to a more neutral place. That might round your upper back. What I want you to do is keep that engagement in the low belly, lift up through the heart. You feel the change right away. You feel your core activated. Then you know you're safe to take the weight overhead. So shoulder press, couple of different options. I'd like for you to have the weights out and the palms facing forward so that you're bringing them together. It's sort of like the chest press, but now in an overhead press. So we squeeze it up and we bring the el elbows just to shoulder height and then straight overhead. If you're new to the practice, if you are maybe feeling some shoulder impingement or you just need an alternative way to perform this exercise, you can bring the weights closer together where your palms are facing each other and you're lifting straight up and straight back down. So more of the traditional shoulder press as opposed to the military press. There's those two options depending on your shoulder mobility, shoulder strength, and shoulder health. After that, we're coming to our standing position for an upright row. This one, the common misalignment is to want to bring the elbows straight up. That tips the upper back and the shoulders forward. Instead, I want you to keep the spine nice and straight. The weights will come slightly away from you, and the shoulders come out to the side. So you've got that nice level position, and you'll feel it loading the shoulders in a much healthier way. So as opposed to dipping down to try and get the elbows up, we're keeping the shoulders externally rotated by bringing that weight slightly out in front of you. So the difference is from here, shoulder tips down. Instead, we want to take it slightly out in front of you, shoulder stays open, and we're loading that medial deltoid there, that meaty part of the shoulder. And then we're coming back to our plank option to have the feet on the chair or they can be on the mat. Once we're in plank, simple shoulder taps here. So we're going to tap opposite shoulder, opposite shoulder. Your hips will naturally sway side to side, but I want you to avoid that rotation. So again, we're resisting that rotation to activate the belly. So you wanna stay really slow, really stable through the ribs and pelvis as you go to that asymmetrical load by taking one arm off. Those are the three exercises and your modifications. This is our final set of work. I will get our timer going here and we'll move in about 15 seconds. So we're starting with that seated shoulder press. Again, when it comes to 
kind of refining and building muscle with upper body movements, I love to take them seated because it takes the legs out of it, out of the equation. Let's begin now. So we knit front ribs and hip points together. So you've got that strong spine and we're working through the mobility in the shoulders to take that weight overhead. You have your options of bringing the weights closer together if you wish. And we're just pressing up on the exhale, inhaling to load. You're also working the upper back here, these muscles that support that great posture that holds you upright as you move throughout your day. You should be feeling a little bit of that struggle in the last few seconds of each interval. Three, two, and one. You can rest the weights on your lap for a moment. So in the follicular phase, we're aiming for muscle development. That means you should feel that struggle, that challenge in the last few reps of every interval, almost like it's hard to get that last quality rep. Upright row is next in three, two, one. Lift the hip points and the low ribs together, and we simply come up and stretch it down. Make sure you're straightening the arms all the way and coming all the way up. Again, you want your collarbones broadening apart. You want the shoulder blades pressing onto the back. We got this. Lift it up and stretch it down. We're here for 15 more seconds. This one's a slightly smaller muscle group, so you might hit that point of fatigue a little sooner in the interval. I know I'm feeling that too. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Set your weights off to the side. Come into your plank prep. So moving that direction, we're simply going to be tapping opposite shoulders in this plank position. So lower down when you're ready. Feet come up. Let's hug the hip points and the low ribs together and begin. So again, your hips are going to want to rotate. They will sway side to side slightly, but I want you to minimize that movement if you can. Again, we're not locking out the elbows, so you can press firmly into the finger pads, add a micro bend into the elbow. That'll help activate biceps, triceps, and chest. Make sure your hips are not dipping down. They're also not hiking up. You've got that really straight and strong line from crown to heels. And rest. Slowly come out. Take it nice and easy through the different body positions as you come all the way back up to standing. Seated shoulder presses next. This is round two of three. Come into position, three, two, and one. Take it overhead and back down, nice and slow lower, and then push up. So the more that you can lower slow, the more you're going to activate the back. And then we push it up to get those shoulders. Down and up. Breathe in, make sure your low ribs are not flaring out. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. They're not elevating up towards the ears. We've got just 10 more seconds. Here's where the struggle hits. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Definitely feeling those last few with the overhead work. You might even feel a slightly higher heart rate demand as you take that load away from the heart. It has to work harder to pump that oxygen-rich blood. Coming into upright row in two, one. Lift it up. Extend all the way down. Lift it up and extend. So this one, you're exhaling as you pull up. Slightly different in the breath rhythm there. You're exhaling as you pull. Inhaling to extend. So lengthen the arms all the way down. Make sure that weight is coming slightly forward of the body so you get that healthy loading pattern on the shoulder. We're here for five. Three, two, and one. Shake it out. Definitely feeling the fatigue in the arms. 
think all of the plank work starts to add up as well. So we're coming into plank for those opposite shoulder taps, closing out round two. Let's come into position. Strong, stable plank. And let's begin. Tap the shoulder, one and then the other. Again, you're gonna sway side to side just a touch, but it should be a very minimal movement. We really wanna be working on stabilizing the shoulders and the hips. You got it. Keep that plank strong. If you need to reset, you can take out the tap for a breath or two. Come back into the strong plank and resume. We're here for just under 10 seconds now. And rest. Slowly step it out. Again, transition nice and easy. Maybe coming into that hip hinge position before you rise all the way up. Just helps your blood pressure equalize as we move the body through different positions. Let's go in three, two, one overhead press. This is our last round. So this one, you should feel the challenge. <sighs> I'm feeling it from the beginning. So you can alternate sides if you need to. If you start to feel like you're having to wriggle up to that top part of the movement, I want you to change to one arm. I'm going to take a few reps like that <sighs> and then reset. Here we go. Take it down and up so much different taking this exercise in a seated position you don't have the ability to push with the legs it's all upper body rest so feel that difference that concentrated isolated action for the shoulders here we're coming into our upright row final round next moving in three two and one so we lift hip points and low ribs together we've got the shoulders relaxed away from the ears elbows are coming slightly forward of the body and all the way back down extending at the bottom we have just this exercise and one more left before we get to head to our cool down so i know it's not a breathless workout you're not totally spent by the end of it but i'm telling you i feel this in the upper body this focused intentional strength work it's the kind of work that makes the difference three two and one set those weights down get ready to come into your plank so it's that that adjustment that mindset adjustment with cyclical fitness that not every practice has to be all out sweat fest completely exhausted by the end come into plank you can find this middle ground and begin where it's more sustainable it feels good and you have energy left in reserve so that you can enjoy this time in your cycle this time of emerging radiant energy where maybe you do feel like you have more reserves in your tank to pour out into the world we want to make sure that we're not using all of that energy for our workouts we want to have some left over at the end last two and one slowly walk it out again take your time as you ease back out of that plank position that is the final exercise of this final set you are done with the workout portion and it's time to head into your cool down next you have just completed your upper body work and now it is time to stretch and cool down please make your way to hands and knees nice and slow so take your time coming down to the mat let's walk the hands out in front bring your forearms down palms to touch and then soften heart belly chest toward the earth I really want you to press firmly into the palms to help feel more of that stretch in the upper back the shoulders Keep the hips lifting up and back and you're just softening the chest and the heart towards the earth you can even bring your chin to the mat if that's available feel this nice length across the side waist 
and then slowly slide the body through the arms, come into sphinx, <laughs> hips stay grounded, really want you to lift up through the chest. As you do that, press down through the forearms, soften shoulders away from the ears. And then you can circle the head, one side, and then the other, just feeling that release of any residual tension, maybe shake the head no, and yes. We want to really walk away without any tension in the neck and shoulders here. Now we're going to take the left arm, stretch it out beside you, bring left ear to the mat, turn to your left side. This might be enough of a stretch. If you need a little more, step your right foot behind you, maybe the left. So you come into kind of a bridge position, but with that bottom arm bound. Use your right fingertips for support to stabilize. Let your head be super heavy. Press down through the left palm to feel that stretch in the chest. We'll slowly come out. We'll switch sides. So right arm out to the side. Roll to the right side of your body. Let your right ear rest on the mat. And then maybe you're sending the left foot behind you. Maybe even the right foot. Kind of like on this side, the bottom leg extended. We're really focusing on opening the chest, stretching the bicep here. So find a position that's comfortable in your neck that doesn't create any strain. Coming out nice and easy. Transition to downward facing dog. We're going to be here for a full 30 seconds. So really press down and forward with the palms. You can keep your knees bent here. We're focusing this more on the shoulders and the chest. Soften heart, belly, chest toward the thighs. Let your head hang freely and heavy. Shake it yes and no. Try not to lock out the elbows. So keep that micro bend that allows you to activate the arms. And then we'll slowly walk hands to feet, feet to hands. Take opposite elbows in ragdoll. So bend the knees generously here. Just kind of sway side to side. So here we're aiming to free the lower back, the shoulders. Nice and easy. And I'll turn to face you here. And we'll keep the opposite elbow clasp if you can. Keep that generous bend in the knees. Slowly roll all the way up. And then from here, simple side bend. So let your blood pressure equalize first. And then we'll take it over to the side. Come up through center. Over to the other side. Nice and easy. So stretching the side waist here. And then come back up through center here, really stretch, broaden across the chest. And then we'll release the arms, take eagle arms. So right arm under left, wrap the forearms, the wrists, the hands, press the palms firmly into each other. And then try to separate the inner armpits. So you're trying to pull those two points apart in space. You should feel this nice stretch in the back and the shoulders. You might even take the shape of your eagle arms up and then down. And then for the last few seconds, we'll just release and twist to the right. Nice. Come back through center, left arm under this time for eagle arm. Same things on this side. We're trying to pull the inner armpits apart, keep the shoulders relaxed away from the ears, and maybe kind of create this flossing action up and down with that shape in the arms. And then in our last few seconds, we'll open and twist to the left. Keep the hip points facing forward. Shake out the fingertips, roll the wrists, and then come back up through center. Take both hands behind your head, interlace the fingers. Knit the front ribs down and in, lift the hip points. And then we want to stretch in the upper back. So I want you to feel your head press into your hands. Let your elbows really widen. I want you to keep this back bend mostly in the upper back. So curl the tail slightly under, lift up and rest your head behind. And then we'll release the arms, interlace fingers behind you. Last big chest stretch here. So hug the heels of the hands together. Once again, knitting those front ribs down and in. And you might shake your head yes and no. And then slowly let it go. And that is your very quick cool down for the upper body. Just a little bit of stretch, a little bit of love. 
I want to thank you so much for joining me for this upper body practice. I feel like so, for so long in my own practice, I lacked the commitment to upper body days. And now through cyclical fitness, it's like that invitation, that permission slip to explore these split strength training days where we're a slightly lower intensity, but it's that focus and that intention that helps get us the, the changes and the strength, the power that we're looking for in in our posture, in our upper body, in the way we hold ourselves up. So thank you for exploring this part of the practice with me, for showing up for yourself and for your cycle, and for letting your body be moved.